Welcome back again today, friends. We are gonna do massive large family meal prep in this video. I am cooking several things in bulk and I am also sharing just some off the cuff recipes and large family cooking that I'm doing within all that. So I had decided, at first I thought I was gonna slice this Italian sausage and then I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna take it all out of the casings. And that's what I did. On this particular day, I had looked in what I like to call my fruit and veggie refrigerator. I had some cabbage that needed used and some squash, some other odds and ends vegetables, and I knew I had this sausage, and I thought, I'm just gonna cook all this up, and I think it's gonna be fantastic, and it was. So right now, just getting all the casings off the sausage. And now I couldn't find my, my good and proper meat chopper. <laughs> there you go, It'd be a little poem. A good and proper meat chopper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, this was a meat flipper that one of my YouTube viewing friends had sent me. And now I am over there. I'm gonna cut up my squash, slice that down. We will be adding that to the pan. I'm trying to pre-cook the meat and then we will add the vegetables. And apparently on this day, I had three or four yellow squash that, again, needed to be used. Oh yes, and I also had just a handful of baby carrots that were left in one package. So those can be cooked up whole. I just sliced them on down a little bit more. And we will add those to the pot. Right now, I am scooping the meat out. If you also uh, gaze your eyes to the right at my, you know, when they used to do those little desk in kitchens, my, my desk area there is all a cluttered. Not that I use it for a desk, but, you know, just more storage. We got some deep cleaning and decluttering videos in our future, I'm sure. Here I am washing the cabbage and then chopping it down. I love me a good cabbage. And I, I got several kiddos who enjoy cabbage as well. So that's good because cabbage is one of those frugal meal ingredients that's so good for you too. And I'm going to town chewing on something also. I always like to eat while I cook. Flipping all the vegetables around over there, getting some more cabbage in. Mm, it's the sausage. I'm like, what was it I was snacking on? I don't think it was the carrots, but yes, the little, little sausage uh, that was all pre-cooked. That's what I was eating. There I have two beef roast. They were frozen, but I was gonna cook them in my Instant Pot. So I was just running some cold water on them, and then I was gonna do the cold water to frost method. The sausage and cabbage skillet that I was doing, that was more for lunch, but I knew for dinner I needed something more substantial. So I was gonna get the roast. Those were from the um, half a cow that we purchased recently. I'm gonna get those going in the Instant Pot for later, still taking out that sausage. I might save some of that sausage for later. And here, I also had a big bag of radishes I had purchased, and I am rinsing those down because I love to slice up and cook radishes with beef roast in the Instant Pot. I've had several questions over on TikTok. If you're not following me over there, be sure to follow me on TikTok as well because I'm getting out fun little TikTok videos every day. And hey, there's the lunch. There's the cabbage and sausage skillet. Anywho, I'm getting a lot of questions about my faucet over there. Now over here on YouTube, you all know the story <laughs> that uh, I the end of our faucet stopped working. 
And instead of just uh, fooling with it too much and replacing it, we are just using the hose at the end of the faucet and that little metal clip there at the end just keeps the hose from going all the way back in. I thought that was pretty ingenious there. Um, so the tops of my radishes were uh, getting kind of mushy, but the radishes themselves were fine. So I just saved those radish tops for my scrap bowl and uh, get the radishes just sliced in half for the Instant Pot. Now, I get asked about doing this. Um, to me, to several folks in my family, the radishes are similar to a potato flavor and consistency whenever they are cooked in the slow cooker or instant pot um, very different than a fresh crisp radish so may not be your thing but i enjoy it so we do this every once in a while and i had again a bunch of radishes that needed to find their purpose in life and i was just going to cook them up all at this one time Also friends, don't forget now for a limited time, you can get my brand new massive mega bundle with over 40 plus mealtime sanity saving products and helps that makes them less than $4 each with the bundle. And from now through March 19th, when you purchase the massive mega bundle, you also get my brand new four week gentle freezer cooking course. It's a $99 value. You get it for free as a special bonus with your massive mega bundle purchase. So click that first link in the description below and save big. Also, everything else in the shop is on sale as well. So click on over and save big time with the massive mega bundle deal, yay. And here, still, still, still chopping the tops off of those radishes. But uh, I'm glad, I was very glad on this day to get this done because they really needed to be used up and my critters did not mind eating those radish tops either. Alrighty, and now it is time to rinse up all of these radishes again with the uh, poor little but still going the it's the little engine that could faucet it's doing it it's still working it still serves the purpose and that's what matters so I had switched the water out a few times in the roast that were in the uh, cold water defrost method there and I am just going to get them in my instant pot kind of push them around there make them fit down below the uh, don't fill above line and also drop the radishes in there as well and I had a bottle of dressing that I was going to pour over all of it it was a balsamic vinaigrette Okay, and now we're gonna come to the shove the radishes in portion of this video. And then what I do with the rest is I put them, and uh, there's some extra carrots as well that I came upon. I'm gonna just throw those in the slow cooker. They'll take just a couple hours here, but uh, might as well get them done as well. And we will, that's some meal prepping because I know I will heat those up to go along with some of the things I eat over the coming days. Thank you. 
And now, new exciting things. So, I used to, if you go back in the way back Jamarell time machine, so if you've been around since I lived at the Forest House, you know I used to get my 18 quart roaster oven out and we would bulk cook chili and bulk cook spaghetti sauce and batch cook meatballs and we did a lot of things in this 18 quart roaster. And ever since I moved here to, as we lovingly like to call it, the forever house, right? Uh, since I've moved here the last two years, this roaster has lived in the basement along with many of my other favorite kitchen gadgets like my bread machines and such. It's just uh, not enough room to squirrel those around and try to... <laughs> There's a lot going on on these little counters. We know this. We know this, right? Anyway, I'm getting super inspired because of my Mega Mama kitchen project that's going down, turning our garage into a big kitchen for our family. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do it because I keep writing poetry about this bone broth that I've been making. And I thought, mm-hmm, see, I roasted a bone. I had stuck that in the oven earlier, roasted it in the oven for a while, and now I'm gonna plop that in my roaster, and we are gonna make 18 quarts of bone broth. Yes, we are. So I'm getting all that going. Mm-hmm, there's the bone. And I've got it down, uh, I think that's about 280 degrees or so. There we go, focus, camera focus. I'm also gonna chop what onions I have. I believe these are my last two onions in the house. Definitely uh, need to go take a visit to the store and stock up on some of our favorite vegetables here. But anyway, chopping these up to throw those in the roaster as well. And then of course I will add in a bunch of water and we will get that roaster oven going for a bunch of bone broth. And I decided that it's been too long. It's time to get the roaster back out and start putting it to good use again because the new kitchens are coming and I just feel like that gives me freedom to, to do more of the things I want to do. So there's the onion going in. And let me say, if you go way, way back in the history of Jay Morrell's kitchens, <laughs> my farmhouse kitchen was even less space than this kitchen, and I used that for a decade. Now, I wasn't able to do uh, big roaster ovens there. There would not even be as much counter space as I have in this small kitchen. So I'm definitely thankful and appreciate even this kitchen at this house. What I just uh, dumped in the roaster there a minute ago was I had a bunch of carrot scraps from some carrots I did maybe a week or so before and I had just thrown those in a bag in the freezer and I knew I would use them for some broth or something coming up soon and that's exactly what we did. Oh, hi friend. <laughs> what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got some wild hair in this lighting. So yes, we got Future Jay Morrell here, uh, throwing, <laughs> throwing rice up in the pantry. Ooh, okay, so, mm hmm let me show you. I'm working on this upstairs closet pantry organization video. This is what you have to look forward to in our next upcoming video. So it seemed like a good time for me to take a break from this uh, upstairs pantry closet organization mess that I have made for myself this evening and to let you know that the spring 2022 massive mega sale is now happening in my large family table shop. You just click the first link in the description below or go to shop.largefamilytable.com everything in my shop is up to 75% off. That is the best selling large family freezer meal packs, sheet pan dinner packs, holiday packs, mega super lots, mealtime sanity saving helps for you and your family. Doesn't matter your family size, your freezer size, whatever configurations you have going on, you will find tons of help and just what you need over at the mega massive sale. And whenever you get the brand new 40 plus sanity saving product bundle. You also get the new four week gentle freezer cooking challenge full free as a special bonus. It's a $99 value and now through March 19th, 2022, I'm giving that away for free to everyone who purchases the massive mega bundle. So be sure to click that first link down in the description below and get your bundle now. Yay. And I'm just actually using an instant pot liner there to fill with water. And I'm just scrounging around, I'm seeing what else I have. Have some apple cider vinegar there, and I'm gonna pour that in as well. That's supposed to help pull good minerals from the bones. 
and I am stirring that up and we're just going to let that cook gently for quite a while and the biggest thing I was concerned about here was the cord in the back touching the back the metal gets hot so I put a glass in between not up against the roaster but up against the cord and holding the cord back to the wall and not against the roaster. You follow all that? Also, mm -hmm, so on this night, I am also taking, again, this is a massive mega food prep day, so all the food prep things going on. I was taking dinner to another family of 10, good friends of ours, and they had just had their eighth baby, and all the local families were signing up to take the family dinner, and this was our night to do that. So I had two chicken ziti freezer meals. I had filmed doing those over in my large family table community. And what I was doing for that family on this evening is I was baking one of the freezer meals for them to have that night because I also had other side items for them. And I brought them the other freezer meal still wrapped and still frozen for them to just put in their freezer for another upcoming dinner when they needed it. We also brought them some salad and a box of of the variety ice cream cones and nutty buddies and such for their kids and some tea and some Italian bread just you know ma let's make us all hungry but we uh, what I did is I had a small Walmart grocery pickup order just with side items for them and we just picked that up on the way and Travis dropped me off uh, to drop it at their house and see their baby for a few minutes so here I am washing off these potatoes and I wanted to just get a bunch of baked potatoes batched cooked as well. We would not eat all of those with that particular night's dinner, but if we had, you know, 30 potatoes ready, we would definitely eat them over the next couple meals. And so here I am taking out the freezer meal for that family, and they still might need to warm it by the time I get it to them, but we don't live too far, and my hope was that uh, they could pretty much just open it and eat it dump their salad in a bowl and go. Anyway, getting my potatoes on now. So my mad scientist mama plan was Travis and I would go drop off this meal. My mom was at the house that evening, so she was hanging out with everybody for us. And while we were gone, those potatoes would cook. The roasts were in the instant pot. Here I am back. And so when we got back, dinner would be done. And that is how it worked out. You can see I got <laughs> lots of folks behind me. We, we joke, even in the bigger kitchen, we'll still always cram into one little corner together. But I'm taking the roast out. I'm telling them all about the cute little baby. And I am getting our dinner ready now since we've been massive meal prepping all day and feeding another family this day time for us to eat so it's both our roast and a sauce and the radishes and actually that was a blend of golden potatoes and sweet potatoes because like I've shared we have a sweet potato problem also some cucumbers and some blackberries So anyway, all the bone broth has finished now. It's actually been about 48 hours since I started it and I had unplugged it so it could start to cool down. I need to remove the vegetable scraps and such. And then I filled several jars to keep some in the refrigerator for the week. And the rest I filled in the gallon freezer bags to put in the freezer for later use with a bunch of upcoming mega freezer cooking that I will be doing. And now we are gonna get into doing a bunch of massive meal prep making the mason jar salads. Now it has been a little bit since I've done mason jar salads. I wanted to take some time. This is my two boxes of jars that I have used for salads in the past and they were a little dusty so I was just taking the lids off of them and I went ahead and just gave them all a good wash in the sink to get them all prepped and ready to make 24 mason jar salads. <music> 
I could have just run these through the dishwasher. I, I say just like it's simple. Um, anyway, dishwasher's always loaded or things are always going in there. I just figured I could hand wash these and then set them on the counter to dry. I knew that I would not be getting to the mason jar salads at this exact moment, but I could prep ahead to get the jars ready for once I was able to dive into that project. And there we go. We're going to have fun with Jamarelle's faucet here, aren't we? There it is again. And also, for recent fun, I have been making some coconut milk kefir, and I was trying this time to make another batch using a little bit of the kefir grains I had left from my last batch. I had just ordered a pack to get started from Cultures for Health, and there you go. So whenever I made it the first time, I added the grains and the coconut milk, and I basically just followed their directions, let it sit out on the counter for so long, and I used our first batch in a bunch of homemade smoothies. So that was exciting, and now I'm trying to make another batch. So here, yep, there I am. I am washing those veggies because we are going to chop and prep those for making our jar salads. I had three peppers left, so that's how I made the decision. How many peppers do you put in the salads, Jamarelle? Well, however many I could find. So I had a couple heads of lettuce. I also had a, uh, a box of spring mix that needed to be used. Sometimes I will take a handful or two and just put whatever we're having for dinner on that or have it on the side. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to use it up and I thought I could use it in the jar salad. So I cut all my peppers up and then we are going to go to town prepping up some other veggies. And yes, drinking water, water, water. And now I have some broccoli. I had got that from um, Walmart as well, but it had been in my refrigerator and I needed to use that up. And I get a lot of questions about the jar salads, and so there's different diagrams and such and lots of different jar salad recipes you can find online. A lot of times mine are, again, based on what I have vegetable-wise that needs to be used up. Uh, the general rule of thumb that I follow is I put the dressing on the very bottom of the jar, and then I put vegetables that I would not mind soaking in the dressing. They would be fine to soak for several days, basically marinate them. And so harder vegetables, uh, like what I have here, the broccoli and I have some carrot uh, match sticks, and we also, what else do I have? Oh, well, the peppers. The peppers, all of those would be fine. Even tomatoes and cucumbers, those would all be fine down in the dressing. Um, then after that, well, well, we'll see. Let's see what layers I do here. So I'm lining up all my jars. Oh, yes. Okay, working mama, taking my pictures, <laughs> sharing all around. Um, also getting a couple different bottles of dressing opened since I was doing 24. And these are smaller ounces. Um, there was a sugar-free Italian I had. Also, there was a creamy ranch and then a cilantro ranch. And I add a little bit of water to those. Those um, smaller dressings were you know, supposed to be pretty pretty pure and holy, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, uh, free of everything. <laughs> so, what, so what's left to be in them, haha? -ha. Anyway, sugar-free and such. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, yep, taking pictures. And uh, I'm tasting the dressings as well. 
I added a little water to those bottles uh, to get more bang for my buck there and help them last a little longer. And now I'm putting the broccoli in, trying to stretch it. We can do it, broccoli. Don't quite make it through all of my jars, but got it broccoli in most. And now I am doing the matchstick carrots. I like getting those uh, whenever I know I have a salad project like this coming, just because they're already in, in perfect little sticks and perfect for salads. Um, but of course you can chop or dice or shred your own carrots. These are just uh, super convenient for me. And if you all want some behind the scenes on how I've been able to get some TikTok videos done lately, you'll see my phone there. And so I'm filming mainly for you guys on YouTube, but I'm also setting my phone up and getting some TikTok videos done just with various things I'm working on. Uh, so the next layer after the carrots, I did various beans. So I opened some jars of black beans. Again, we talk about saving money on groceries and stretching our dollars and you know making the most with what we have. I took into account what I already had. I had some black beans, I had some chickpeas, uh, and there you go, I had some pumpkin seeds. So I also, besides eating those, I throw those into the salad jars because why not? I also like sunflower seeds on salads, of course the shelled ones, and didn't have any of those, but I did have pumpkin seeds and some bacon. Those are not the hard bacon bits, so that's nice. Now I'm getting to my protein layers, if I have the bacon, and then next we will do the meat and the cheese. You see, some, some salad jars were got a little skimpy, but I at least had some veggies in there. And of course, whenever you dump these, uh, you can add more on it. I've heard from some people who they don't even do the dressing at the bottom. They just add the dressing at the end, which of course is also a fine option. Uh, but I'm just adding all I can to my different jars, even scraping my counter there and just uh, picking up little veggie pieces. And so I'm going to do some canned chicken now in these. And I'm draining them and then just scooping out a few spoonfuls into each jar. And that's how they're looking so far. Nice variety, just subtle changes between the dressings of the protein. I did some canned tuna as we go on down. Getting a few more tuna varieties done. And now I'm gonna do a few more cans of chicken. Just filling in where a few of them seem like they could use a little more. Now also for more savings, you could do something like do a chicken in your Instant Pot or a chicken in the roaster oven, and you could chop down that chicken or even a turkey and use that for your jar salads as well. Plus I'm sure have some prepped meat for your freezer for later meals. Not what I did in this video at this moment, but definitely something that you can do. And now, now it comes to shove in all the greens that I can.
And so here by this point, I still had a bag of spinach that used I needed to use up. So I thought, let's just shove all this spinach in these jars too. And there we go, they're looking so pretty. Then I'm going to pack those leaves down once we get the lids on, or as we get the lids on. There we go. I've been asked if all my kids eat these, so no, we are human. Not all my kids are going to enjoy my jar salads, but I do have several folks in my household. I will say about four to sometimes five will enjoy the jar salads. They are a good option to have on hand. Of course, I think as a, a quick mama lunch or salad with dinner, I don't always have time to do salads and such. And so when I have these done, helps me helps me get my salad in and so these will be good for about five to seven days uh, just depends on what you have packed in the salads but that's how how long mine usually last and there you go looking so pretty a big thing is you don't want to shake them you don't want the dressing to get up there on those leaves or in the protein or then they will uh, just they will go bad quicker and you don't want that so now I am um, and of course by going bad I just mean the leaves will wilt and everything you don't you don't want wilty leaves in your salad jars so after all that fun I need to wipe down all of my jars because we had some just various vegetables I also this is funny uh, once I get the jars wiped down I have the equivalent of a small salad that was in between the jars on the counter and so I just take my plate over there and I get that salad on my plate and then I eat it <laughs> so how do you like that there you go that's my small salad across the counter and yep just put it on my plate and I will eat it almost cleaned up there can clean up the rest of my counter now and my last few jars and then so it's always a good idea to save the boxes that your canning jars come in of course for canning uh, can be helpful just for organizing on your shelves but also whenever you're doing jar salads it's helpful anything you're doing in your jars if you're doing yogurt or granola or whatever um, just easy for me to put organized in my refrigerator and pull out when I need them and I will I end up taking all these to my faded refrigerator uh, all my refrigerators end up having having names and descriptions uh, but then we do bring about four or five in at a time to have at in the uh, in kitchen refrigerator here as well so they are just a quick grab and go and now I'm just adding what was left of some canned chicken yum and I'm just gonna eat that eat that and like it alrighty so now I'm spraying down a bacon sheet and we are going to do these chicken apple sausages. Now, again, my TikTok of this dinner is pretty controversial. You'll have to go on over there and see how see how you weigh in on it. Uh, but we understand over here on YouTube, I mean, chicken apple sausages, this is a delightful flavor. And we were trying something new. Now, I did not tell the people in my house that these sausages had apple in them until after we ate them. Not a big hidden secret, but wanted them to try something new and you know, they couldn't even tell, but hey, another another way to get some apple in there, right? Also, we enjoyed the chicken flavor. Um, I ended up doing, let's see, these packages were about 12 ounces each and I think I did six or seven packages full and then I put these in the oven and then while they were cooked and then while they were cooking I had a again just going through my freezer I had about uh, a five pound bag of organic corn and then we have about four pounds of strawberries there I know the three oranges are random but that's the kind of mom I am we of course had like 
10 or 15 more pounds of oranges in the refrigerator. But before we open a new bag of something, I like to finish what we already have out. So those three oranges needed a home. And of course, strawberries have to be used up quickly. And so I was just serving these along with dinner. I can think of it as a picnic style dinner. You know, it could have been corn on the cob, but I didn't. I actually do have some corn in the cob in the freezer didn't have it in the freezer that I looked at and um, we can certainly do the the loose corn kernels as well and with the strawberries I was going to cut the little tops off and I didn't get to it and that's okay mama had been doing a lot this day and it's okay I can hey kid I can wash a strawberry for you and we got the orange peelers and there we go lots of dinner also with this dinner as with all our dinners, I mean, you can always have second helpings or get out the butter and the bread or anything else uh, that they would like to add to it is fine. I am just draining my corn there. Also giving myself a, a steam mask, right? <laughs> all, all the moms understand. And now I'm just going to put that with some salt and pepper and some butter in a bowl. And we have all the sausages ready and all of that fruit. And then, yay, dinner. Kids in the background there getting water cups and getting plates and forks and napkins ready. But I did that plate to show you guys what's for dinner. Thank you friends for hanging out with me and doing all this large family massive meal prep over several days. I just like to have a running list of things I would like to get done mealtime wise and meal prep wise at our house. Kind of like a meal prep loop schedule. So whenever I have time, I just come back to the next thing on the list and just keep going round and round <laughs> till it all gets done. And by then I have a new list and we just uh, carry on, carry on with the meal prep. Remember to click the first link in the description below head over to shop.largefamilytable.com and get my brand new massive mega 40 plus product bundle for 75% off plus you get my brand new freezer cooking course that's a $99 value you get it for free when you purchase the massive mega bundle everything in the shop is on sale right now for a limited time and now through march 19th you get the brand new freezer cooking course for free so click that first link below and i'll see you real soon with another brand new video bye bye